Welcome back to The Burnout Educator. I'm Ryan Savage, The Burnout Educator, and here's our co-host. Hey guys, it's Olivia Willoughby here. Awesome. And today we've got an awesome guest, uh, Thomas Prim. Thomas, uh, I had the opportunity to work with Thomas for a number of years and started uh, working with him when he was a substitute teacher in my math classroom, like my second year teaching. That's and true. So, mm-hmm. so super excited to have Thomas. And uh, our paths had crossed a number of times and uh, got to reconnect here the last really couple years and really excited to have you as a guest. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah. Yeah. This, you know, we we'll really can jump right in, but I... I just really have to say, like, one, thank you so much for being willing to come and do this. I know that it's our setup just continues to grow, and I know that it can be overwhelming and daunting. It's so. a little freaky that I'm in video. <laughs> Understandably so. If, I'm, I'm not really for sure you're on my good side, or, but I think you're on my front side, which makes it even more awkward. <laughs> this is true. We're hoping with all the setup of the lights and everything that every side becomes a good side. Yes. Like, right. If you add enough lighting... You're always going to be beautiful, right? Right. Well, if you catch me in the right light, I look like Brad Pitt. And so I was kind of hoping you would get me in that light. You know, we'll give it a best shot. Right. Yeah. I appreciate that. Well, I really want to jump in and, and there's a lot to your story that I don't know. And like, I know we started together like seven or eight years ago, but why, why education? Why at that point in your life? And like, what brought you to that place to choose to get into education? Um, you know, I think like a lot of educators, uh, when I was a little kid, uh, I wanted to be a teacher. I don't know if that's because we don't know anyone besides teachers. So we just kind of <laughs> dream of being a teacher. Uh, but I remember like going to sleep at night and imagining that I had a class, an art class, and that, uh, you know, how I would handle my first day. And um, so, you know, I, I made a living as a tattoo artist all through my 20s and 30s. And, okay. um, uh, you know, I worked as, a, you know, a painter, uh, you know, a, a fine art painter. Uh-huh. And, um uh, in my 40s, I decided to go back to school, actually, at 40. I went back to school. And so um, at that point, uh, I thought, well, you know, I'll, I'll go into education. Mm-hmm. Somehow, I lost my way, and I ended up uh, getting a bachelor's in philosophy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a story I'm actually interested in, really, right. is because I've heard you talk about the bachelor's in philosophy. And you and I have had very like a number of conversations Especially like when you handed me the first half of The Crossing. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. The first 127 pages of Cormac McCarthy's The Crossing. Yeah. Yes. Literally, the, they had been ripped out of the novel and it was just the, the pages, just pages, 127 pages. And I got on a plane with that book. Right. And I, I, I finished, it was part one of that book and I put it down and I was like, you bastard. It's Where so is the rest? Yeah. He, did, he did come to my classroom asking for the rest. And, and I, I, I rebound it for you, didn't I? You did. I yeah. still have the copy. Yeah. yeah. That's it's amazing. A, it's an amazing book. But it's if you only read books. the first part and you don't have access to the rest, yeah. it's really terrible. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, I keep that first 127 pages bound separately uh, with two other books. A, a book of uh, Camus' essays. Um uh, the myth of Sisyphus and other essays and uh-huh. then a uh, book of poetry uh, called the monkey wars but i keep those three together all bound up like some kind of religious text <laughs> oh that's <laughs> that amazing right? yeah. yeah i love it that's awesome so do you mind to give like a little context around the the bachelors in philosophy so um i met with an advisor to uh study uh, inf- uh library and information science Okay. And he says, well, it really doesn't matter what you do. You know, if you, if you get it, there's no bachelor's in, in, uh, you know, uh, library and information science, it's a, it's a master's only, it doesn't matter what kind of bachelor's you have. Mm-hmm. And I had taken a philosophy class and, um, I thought, well, you know, I mean, you know, of course I've read, you know, sure. different things. And so <laughs> I thought, well, maybe I'll do this, you know, and like, he was really pushing me not to go into education for some reason. He, and now I know why, <laughs> but, um, so I, I thought, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to take some, some philosophy classes mm-hmm. and next thing you know, I'm just, uh, you know, neck deep in Western philosophy okay. and really happy about it. Uh huh. Wow. Yeah. It's, and were you at Missouri State with that? I with was. That I yeah. was. Yeah. It's uh, and when we were graduating, there was only three of us, and uh, oh, wow. the kid next to me, he <laughs> says, "You know, philosophy is the degree that everyone and no one needs," <laughs> and he's correct. Yes. Yeah. But you know, the thing that I'm grateful for about philosophy mm-hmm. is that it 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 opened my eyes to um, 
just a new way of looking at things. Yeah, I can um, imagine. Yeah, right. you know, and uh, you know, you take things like Stoicism, existentialism. These are really important schools of philosophy that mm -hmm. uh, you know have really kind of col colored my decisions. You know, from sure. forward. Oh, I can imagine it. I haven't had much to do with philosophy classes, but the little bit that I have been able to discuss, even like within my master's courses, I was like, mm -hmm. gosh, I'm like interested in this. And also I hate it at the same time. And I want to understand more, but also, oh, there's like, <laughs> there's like all these parts of me that, uh -huh. so I could see how you could be pulled into that. Sure. And especially you saying like, you know, that nobody gets, but everybody needs. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. conversations that I'm sure you have had based off of. Right. Oof, just mind blowing. Mm -hmm. Well, there's, you know, those 20 something kids in philosophy program. Those, those are some sharp guys mm -hmm. uh, and girls. Um, I'm, I'm not going to start gendering people here. <laughs> <laughs> they are amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, um, it was, it was really nice to, to see that arrogance and that brilliance yeah. Uh, all working together. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I was in my 40s, and so uh, I'm a little slower and uh, not really needing to argue. I'm just there to kind of, uh, you know, take in this information and to mm -hmm. just be a part of these young people whenever, we're, you know, experiencing this. And it's so important to them. Every conversation is the conversation. Uh -huh. it, was, it was amazing to be around. I bet it was. Yeah, you know, and I, one of the reasons I went back to school, the main reason is, you know, I had... Um, kind of lost my way through my thirties and, uh, you know, got pretty mm -hmm. deep into my, you know, to a, a whole other lifestyle. And mm -hmm. so when I cleaned myself up, I, uh, you know, wanted to do something different and I just wanted to experience everything I could. Yeah. yeah. So I started with philosophy. Well, and I imagine it's a, an, a way, one way, a good way to, to find a place to just like sit and be and be in the moment and try and experience whatever is in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to hear a little bit more about your experience with those other students. Um, you're talking about you being a different age. Um, I remember being a student with people that were older than me, um, you know, maybe not the quote unquote typical college age students sure. in class. Um, and I've never thought about it from that side. Right. Um, so I would love to hear kind of maybe even what the type of responses you got from them when you did share, um, or how you felt within like that classroom space. Uh, well, you know, in the class, I, I didn't feel like that every, you know, question was the most important question. And mm -hmm. I didn't feel like uh -huh. engaging with instructors always was the most important thing. You know, a lot of times, uh, college professors, especially in something like a philosophy program, they're looking for the bait. And uh, right. so I would debate with some of them, but mm -hmm. then they, they didn't like it. If you had a little bit better information, mm. maybe you were coming at it from a better direction. They were maybe used to the typical 20 something argument that they got. And then, uh, you know, really to be honest, I just started getting kind of quiet mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, just taking in more information and uh, really not participating so much in the banter that took place. Mm -hmm. I, I was just kind of there for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but the kids, I mean, they were amazing. You know, I got some really good friends out of it. Yeah. 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 So when you started substitute teaching, were you still in that bachelor's program? I think I just finished that program. Okay. But I went directly from that program into a master's program at Drury, uh, for, uh, art and theory. Okay. And, uh, when I got in there, I was like, well, this is pretty easy. You know, maybe, you know, here you, you wanted to go into education here mm -hmm. to get this, this philosophy degree what are you going to do with this and then um you know the whole time i'm still tattooing and so i thought well you know this is this is an easy enough program maybe i should go ahead and take another you know master's program so i went <laughs> ahead and enrolled in msu into their special education program okay okay because i had through through the substitute teaching i had started subbing in behavior classrooms and i found behavior interesting mm-hmm mm -hmm. Yeah, so you were taking two master's programs at the same time while substituting during the day. And yeah. tattooing still. And tattooing. And I took a job at Victoria's Secret in the mornings uh, at 6 a.m., <laughs> working 15 hours a week doing light maintenance and janitorial work okay. to help pay for my tuition. Because uh -huh. wow. I wasn't doing anything at that time. But then if somebody called wanting me to sub, Victoria's Secret was cool with me leaving. Oh, nice. Yeah. Wow. So I did that for two years. 
Okay. Any connection or just random application? Um, a client had said, hey, you know, uh, oh, we yeah, need this yeah. position. Uh-huh. Right. And so I went and I filled out an application and then they really kind of fell in love with me because I'm a clean freak. <laughs> and so when I quit, they, they were like, oh, if you'll please stay, we'll give you more money. Uh-huh. So they gave me like a $3 an hour raise. I uh-huh. stayed for like for two more months. And then even after I started teaching, they were like, if you'll come back, we'll pay you $12 an hour. And I was like, <laughs> <You're> mm, like <laughs> I'm good. Tempting, but like also good. I'm doing something else right, now. Right. Yeah. Wow. So, so, did you know, did you do student teaching in that master's program? I did program? not. No, it was at an accelerated program. And okay. so uh, you had to take a job as a pair of your last year. Okay. okay. Um, and so I took a job, though, as a, uh, what they call a BI, which is essentially a, um, a ISS teacher. Uh-huh. Okay. And so they then, I got special permission for that. Yeah. I think they were worried that nobody was going to hire me because of the way I looked. And so <laughs> somebody hired me. Um, and I took that position and then they gave me access to the SPED room and the SPED uh-huh. files and, uh, I was able to do my, my master's work through that. Sure. sure. Thomas mentioning, you mentioning like <clears throat> them being worried, you know, somebody would hire you. Did you notice in getting hired any problems with that? Or is that something that you're like, well, I'm aware this school isn't probably going to go well, for. Yeah. I applied for 68 different jobs. Mm-hmm. Uh, over eight districts, um, and I took a pair of position, and that was number sixty-eight. Wow! They hired me the day before school started, um, but then I, I crushed it there. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. then, uh, someone I had interviewed with at Sped, they had uh, contacted me when my teaching position opened up, uh-huh. mm-hmm. so I moved straight into that wow. the following year. Yeah, there was uh, so. You subbed often for the CrossCat special education teacher Correct. that was a class within a class teacher that mm-hmm. worked in my math classroom Okay. for like two years. Yeah. And then I never saw him again. Okay. But you were the, like my favorite person to have come in for her. Because I'll actually get up and help the kids. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. I mean, <laughs> sometimes that's hard to find. <laughs> right. Absolutely. You know, I mean, he showed up in the classroom, so that's a win. Yeah. And then two... Already um, above and beyond. Exactly. Right. And uh, he was like, oh, let me, no, teach me that real quick. Okay, okay, I can help students. And, he, you know, we're not like, okay, here's my list of students that I'm allowed to help. It's like, right. no, everybody's in here learning. I, can, I, I, I like can help doing everybody. that kind of job. You know, I yeah. liked walking up and down the aisle, mm-hmm. getting to know the kids, yeah. mm-hmm. and asking if I could assist. You know, it was, it was a really pleasurable experience being a substitute teacher. I enjoyed it immensely. It's mm-hmm. beautiful. I could probably sub the rest of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Not really, but I probably do. <laughs> That's amazing. That is so, I've always thought, oh my gosh, I'd be terrified to sub. Here I am teaching, but I'm like, <laughs> oh, to go into, you know, somebody else's, basically be somebody else for a day. And then the next day, maybe be somebody else again. Mm-hmm. It's like, uh, no, I want to be in my safe spot. <laughs> yeah. But I can totally understand your interest there. And I mean, that's beautiful. My first day subbing, my first day in a classroom. Uh-huh. Uh, was in a kindergarten classroom. <laughs> Please and tell the story. <laughs> they, they ran a game on me. That was, they had me serving them cupcakes. I, you know, I'd, I'd look over to a kid I trusted. I'm like, is this true? And they're like, yeah, it's true. <laughs> every day. Cupcakes. Every we day. were supposed to get those cupcakes. And <laughs> it, was, it was terrifying. I remember looking at the clock and it was like nine o'clock and mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going to walk off this job. Yeah. Yes. I was yes. totally mortified. These kids were so much to handle. Wow. Uh, so the next day I show up. Now this is, this is kind of, this was kind of hard for me. I, I show up the next day. This is at a different district uh-huh. that sh- shall not be named, but it's outside of Springfield. Uh-huh. So anyway, uh, I show up. And I have my sheriff's badge. I have some deputy badges. I got some stickers. I'm, I'm ready to go. Mm-hmm. Kindergarten and again. Kindergarten again. Okay. And so, you know, now I, I may be dressed like this right now, but, you know, uh, then, you know, I had very short hair. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I wore a very tight groomed goatee, okay. tie, tie, shirt, yep. shoes, yep, yep, pants, yep. the whole thing. And uh, the secretary was like, uh, you, you're not supposed to come back. And I'm like, you booked me for 12 days. And oh no. She's like, uh, no, the district called and they do not want you here. What? Yeah. Mm. So I, I called the guy who had hired me at district mm-hmm. and he was like, let me go check on this. 
so he calls the you know everybody and he calls around and he calls me back and he's like you can work at the high school but you cannot go back to an elementary mm. and i was just devastated and to be honest i've always felt like at some point i might be pushed out of education I remember telling my girlfriend at the time, I said, I love doing this so much. I'm afraid it'll be taken from me. Mm. <sighs> but, you know, we're in Springfield, Missouri, and mm-hmm. you know, you got neck, you're the guy with neck tattoos. You know, it kind of freaks people out sometimes. Right. Wow. I mean, mm. these are things that I can believe, but to sit with you and to hear your stories like that, um, it's like disheartening it's Mm -hmm. somebody who is there for the kids Mm -hmm. and to hear you know you're coming in the next day i'm ready i'm gonna i have these stickers i'm ready to do my best i've committed to to 12 days in kindergarten so i am committed to these kids they will never god is my witness they will never get cupcakes from me in kindergarten. (laughs) (laughs) and then to to have a response like that um Basically, with no warning, just yeah. it was painful. You know, it was painful. Yeah. We don't know what you're. We're not talking about what you were like in the classroom. You could have been great for them, but the way you look is something we're not okay. Well, with. the best one is uh, when I was working with Ryan. I, I don't know if you're familiar that this happened. Um, if we've ever talked about it, or maybe you uh-huh. and uh, our principal had talked about it when I was working, um, and he was the vice principal. Um, I was, you know, in a, a EBS classroom. I was an EBS teacher. Mm-hmm. So I'm restraining a, a mm-hmm. student, you know, to keep him safe. And the principal came in and he said, you know, I really admire what you're doing. I'm appreciative of what you're doing. He says, you know, you just can't ever judge a book by its cover. And I see something on his face. And, you know, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. He's, he was like, well, I wasn't going to tell you. But a woman filed a police report against you for lurking outside of the school. Mm-hmm. And she sent him a picture of my vehicle a picture mm-hmm. of my license plate and a number of the police report. And he responded, you know, mm-hmm. lady, this is one of our teachers. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it caused me to cry. You know, I, I ended up in the bathroom crying <sighs> over it. Yeah. And it was just really hurt my feelings that somebody mm-hmm. would view me in such a way. You know, here I'm a teacher. Mm-hmm. I'm there for the kids. Mm-hmm. And uh, someone is reporting me as lurking outside the school that I work at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, we used to joke around, me and my, my parents, about uh, if there was a school intruder and I was to exit the school with my my students, that I would be shot. Mm-hmm. <sighs> so, you know, it, it was kind of a true worry for us. Right. So I'm curious, um, as an artist, like, I mean, I just want to have time to talk about all your tattoos. You know, I want right. to know the background and, and your story of tattooing, but kind of Going over that, I'm curious to know, you know, you started, you have your tattoos, and then you start teaching. Would you change the way that you look? Um, I would change the way that I look, not so much because of that. Okay. Um, Though it would make my life easier. I think I would change it now. If I I got my first uh, tattoo, I was 13. Mm -hmm. And I think that I would, uh, if I was 13 today, I wouldn't get a tattoo because I'm such a rebel. Mm-hmm. at 13 that there's no way I would want to look like everyone else. Mm. And so I wouldn't get tattooed, mm-hmm. you know, but when I got tattooed at 13, nobody had tattoos. Right. You were the rebel then. Right. Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now it's just, you know, if you have tattoos, if you're sleeved out and you have neck tattoos, you just look like a douchebag with a credit card. It doesn't really <laughs> mean anything yeah. anymore. You know, used to people would cross the street to get away from me, which mm-hmm. would bother me. But now they just want to come up and touch your arms and talk to you. you know, mm. it's, a, it's a whole different world. Yeah. yeah. Which is nice. It's nice that we're more open. And mm-hmm. when I'm on the West Coast out there, nobody looks at me twice. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the, there was another story, too, where you had pulled over to send a text message. That was part of that. That was yeah. part of the same deal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, part of the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was... Uh, it, it, there's always some little thing like that that's yeah. taken place. But, uh, you know, when I was a kid, um, you know, I grew up in uh, very impoverished neighborhoods. Uh, we were, um, we moved a lot. We were very transient. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so there was always an element of being treated that way. Mm. And uh, so it's not unfamiliar to me. Um, you know, even before I was heavily tattooed, I was mm-hmm. kind of treated like someone who was bad or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you get pulled over by the cops, you know, a lot and kind of harassed. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So, you know, I think that's one of the reasons I wanted to go into education and particularly go into a field of uh, behavior support because I wanted to help those kids that are labeled bad mm -hmm. or lost yeah. or, you know, they're so marginalized. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I cannot remember past sixth grade, past elementary school, one teacher that took interest in me. Mm -hmm. Nobody. You know, I would show up to class high. They wouldn't say anything. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember I had one teacher that would actually say, oh, you're stoned again. Hmm. No call to the parents, no mm -hmm. interventions, no pulling you aside. Yeah. And you were just kind of lost. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I wanted to be in a position where I could, you know, help those kind of kids. Yeah. Yeah. I know, you know, so there was this gap, you know, you were in my classroom a lot. And then there was this gap where I didn't, I didn't see you. And I, we had never exchanged numbers or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have any contact with you. And then I got hired at Jarrett in the summer and then ended up there and we started and teachers came back that day and I was like, wait a second, that that's Tom Sprim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, I talked to Rob and I was like, Tom's what? He's, yeah. He's our EBS teacher. I was like, that dude is awesome. Right. And was just super excited to see you there. And then to have that opportunity to work with you, I mean, like full, <clears throat> full send endorsement on advocate for kids. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. You are a huge advocate in the way that you just described yeah. mm -hmm. the, your experience with students mm -hmm. and just, um, you know, like no fear to step in and handle any situation that you had to. Right. And then on the backside of it, like, I love this kid like he's my own. Mm -hmm. Right. How can we, how can we make sure he's fed tonight? Mm -hmm. How can we make sure he's sheltered tonight? Like, and it was really, really, it, it didn't, it made a big impression on me. I appreciate that. You know, and that was one of the things I remember my last year uh, teaching before mm -hmm. I, I moved into uh, being a process coordinator. Um, uh, the kids had really kind of started melting down. And, you know, there was a new dynamic. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so I just, I pulled them all into the class. And, you know, I set them all down. And I, and I asked them, I said, have I ever lied to any one of you? No. Uh, do you believe that I love you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you believe I would do anything for you? Yes. Then why are you acting like this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to help you guys and you're making it difficult to help you. Mm -hmm. right. And I told him, I said, you know, last night was the first time I thought about leaving the classroom mm -hmm. and you know, all this violence that's taking place in this class. Yeah. I just, I just can't take it. Right. You know, and it had got to the point where I, I was having a hard time rolling over. I couldn't sit down. I couldn't stand mm -hmm. up. My body was just getting beat up from, yeah. you know, trying to help these young men and women, um, which made me uh, probably make one of the more poor education decisions or, you know, career decisions, which is I became a process coordinator, <laughs> which is the job nobody should ever have to do. It, it's a, that is a really, really challenging job. It I'm, really is. Yeah. I'm super from as an administrator, I was really, really grateful <laughs> for mm. that role because it was a, a level of uh, accountability that I didn't have to carry on top of everything Right, else. right. It's like, oh, it's somebody else they can hate. Yeah. <laughs> it's the position that everybody hates you. The parents hate you. The kids don't know you. Right. Uh, the mm. teachers, they don't really like you. Uh, but you do get support from other process coordinators, but uh -huh. that's just because you're all hated. Right. I think yeah. it's like lawyers, right? <laughs> Essentially, like we're the lawyers <laughs> in schools. Yeah. And even, I mean, even administrators too, because process coordinators, at least in the context that we were working in, are usually the ones that, that handle the, the, de the decisions of sorting through the paperwork and the diagnoses and whatever else and yeah. saying, nope, you can't suspend like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the, a lot of things, uh, you know, when I became a process coordinator, I, I was really shocked at um, how many students are being pushed into special education that don't really need to be pushed into special mm -hmm. education you know special education became a thing where um it, it's just become a catching ground for uh -huh. poor behaviors mm -hmm. and so you have these students in these cross -cut classrooms that are there for uh support for a learning disability um or maybe they have autism mm -hmm. um you know or id or whatever right and they're in this class and they need to support but then you have these other kids that are catching this, uh, you know, emotional disturbance diagnosis or other uh, health impaired yeah. uh, for ADHD. And, uh, you know, not that those kind of students don't need support. They do. 
They do. But, but a lot of students are being mislabeled, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then administrators are looking at a district or a building-wide solution, right? They're not looking at individual students. They're right. looking at mm-hmm. what can I do for my building to keep my teachers happy, to keep my parents happy, to keep my students safe. Mm-hmm. And so they start pushing a student into special education. Well, special education knows how to handle behaviors. Well, my thing as a process coordinator is I would ask the administrator, um, you know, if the student is with special education 30% of the time, why are we 100% responsible for their behavior? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, the administration has to step up their game mm-hmm. with behavior. The school has to step up their game. The district has to step up their game. Yeah. And it's a game that nobody wants to step up to. I, I had an administrator, he literally told me, I said, well, you know, I provide trainings for my teachers, and it's open to all teachers on behavior. Uh on how to address different behaviors uh you know your teachers are welcome to come he's like well i can't ask my teachers to do this Mm -hmm. well yeah you can yeah you know but it's a it's a it's a thing that nobody really wants to address so what we do is we just you know as a system we just keep taking more shit and piling it on top of more shit and we're calling it good but the thing is is it's so piled so high now Mm -hmm. that none of it's working Mm-hmm. And they never strip away the old system before they implement the new mm-hmm. system. Mm-hmm. And we all know as educators, if you've been in education for any length of time, it's like, oh, here's the new solution. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But this new solution is the same as the old solution. Right. It's not going to work because people aren't following it with fidelity. Right. Yeah. Here's the new solution that we'll use for approximately two years before another new solution mm-hmm. comes. And we'll just kind of mix them all together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and the reality of it is this it all needs to be stripped back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, behavior is one of the things that, you know, to me is so intriguing, especially, you know, being re- removed from it and, and knowing how I approached it and then knowing how so many teachers approach behavior in their classrooms and then also looking at it through the lens of like of how um, how I parent, how I used to parent, how I parent today, right? how we utilize similar constructs in behavior context in schools and how it's presents such a challenge mm-hmm. for teachers, for administrators, for communities. Um, you know, one thing that I in really thinking about behavior uh, that we haven't, you know, we haven't tackled this conversation yet, but it's one that I've been excited to have is this idea that, you know, we as humans biologically have this, this propensity to hand down the solution that worked best for us. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, um, here's the list of things and strategies that I utilize to get me to the place that I am and look at how successful I've been. Right. I have lots of, you know, here are all the, the objective reasons why I've met the measure of success in this culture. And so we look at children, the next generation, we say here, just use my strategies. Right. Mm -hmm. They work, they work great. Look at me. But then you, you, go into different contexts and now the strategies don't work in the way that they are told that they do. And so how many years does a kid only need to show up to school where when the, you know, the adult, the teacher in the room says, no, all you have to do is sit down and work hard. Right. And Mm -hmm. then you'll, you'll, you'll be great. And then they go home and they're like, no, I'm this, this, that strategy doesn't work for me here. The strategy doesn't work for me out in the world. Like Mm -hmm. it doesn't take long to realize that, Hey, those strategies that you're telling me to try and utilize don't work in the context that I'm trying to apply them. Right. And it, the, the individualization that it requires to be able to support individual students in their behavior Mm -hmm. is not a conversation that I was ever invited to. Right in an educational context with the exception of the space where you taught in to an extent. Right. I feel like there was a flavor of that and it was more so around you and the co-teacher that you were working with Mm -hmm. and a willingness to say, I'm willing to create whatever structure I need to, to support you individual student. Mm -hmm. But well, you know, you support the individual student, but you're supporting them in a whole. Right. Right. So it's, it's one of the things is, is, you know, um, you know, I invite you in, Mm-hmm. to this environment this this is your family this is a thing where we're all going to work together yeah. and uh you know we're going to celebrate our differences and that we're going to be a part of this thing uh and then you hold them to 
this expectation. Yeah. And one of the things that, that I see so often is nobody is holding anyone to a high expectation mm -hmm. anymore. They just lower that bar and there's mm -hmm. not an expectation there. And I'm like, well, where's your Morgan Freeman moment? Where, where's your, where's your, you know, Edward James almost uh, moment, mm -hmm. you know, where's your stand and deliver, you know, you want to hold students to an expectation. We want to hold teachers to that expectation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we want to hold ourselves to this expectation yeah. and we will all rise to that expectation. But as long as we keep dumbing it down mm -hmm. and we keep lowering that expectation, everybody is going to go ahead and go for that low bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's this, you know, to me, what was so intriguing and I bring it back to a comment that I already said too, is this, this idea that you had support, I think in yeah, for me, observing you and your work was one of the first opportunities that I had in that sort of context to experience what I would label as like unconditional positive regard, unconditional love right. for the individual, for the human. Mm -hmm. Because you exhibited and, and, and held high expectations for those students who often didn't meet it. Right. Mm -hmm. But the human, the person wasn't demonized as a result of not Never. meeting the expectation. no. no. The, the person wasn't labeled. Mm -hmm. There was no good and bad. Mm. There was, we didn't meet the expectation. Yeah. But I still have a spot for you. We're just humans making mistakes. Yes. Right. And that's the thing I think that we miss with students so and children much. so mm -hmm. often, right? So much. Is yeah. that, you know, I can't think of how many times I've talked to a kid and they say, you know, I really like you, Mr. Prim, because you speak to me like I'm an adult. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm just speaking to you like you're a human being. Right. Yes. You know, I see you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they see us, right? And they, uh, yes, they, they, do. they, they yeah. want that connection. And I remember being in grad school and, and one of the things to maintain a behavior was, uh, uh, uh teacher attention. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, who the hell wants teacher attention? Uh -huh. And you know, and then I get into the classroom. I didn't want teacher. Right. Attention. Mm -hmm. It was something that I never got. <laughs> right. So it wasn't even on my, you know, my radar. Uh -huh. Yeah. But these, you get in there and these students are just vying for your attention. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they will do anything. You know, a grown man will work his ass off for a sticker. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Uh -huh. yeah. The things I will do for you, if y'all have a sticker for me at the end of this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I saw yeah. some out there. Three. I saw some yeah. out there. Yeah. Well, like, if oh, you man, keep I doing really... a good job. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably got me like on class dojo. <laughs> like, <laughs> We're putting your points up right, on the board. Right, right. <laughs> but, you know, that's... Um, I mean, who doesn't want to be seen? Yeah. And if you're, if you're marginalized at home, mm -hmm. you, yes. you say you're not, you're not getting enough love. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not getting enough attention. You're not getting enough food. You're not getting adequate yes. sleep. Uh, you're being abused. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're being neglected. And then you come to school and you only know one way to act. And then what kind of attention are you getting? You're kind of getting abusive attention. Mm -hmm. You're being neglected at school. Yeah. You're being punished all the time. Mm -hmm. People have no expectation other than for you to fail. Mm -hmm. That's an abusive attitude towards a child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why shouldn't we see these kids? Yeah. And, you know, the thing is, is they will do anything mm -hmm. to do better for you. And then eventually they'll start doing better for themselves. Be good for goodness sake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, th this idea of kind of, you know, reframing and talking about strategy, you know, the like, to me, I feel like I want an entire podcast on this and maybe someday we will. Mm -hmm. But um, in the context of this conversation, like reflecting back on my own behavior before now and, and as a classroom teacher, I had that mindset, that, that idea that you know, this list of strategies gets people places mm -hmm. because it's getting me somewhere, right? And uh, like, no, come and just fit the mold. All you got to do is drop, right. drop off these bad strategies and just pick up these good ones. Look around. I mean, I've got some good ones you can have, or you can look over there in that classroom to don't take those from that classroom, but good, you know, you can pick these up, but this idea, it's so hard to get other adults to think outside of their own strategies mm -hmm. when they haven't been met in the face with the limits of their own strategies. Well, I, and I think that, I mean, sadly, you know, with education, um, we become inherently lazy. We just yeah. can't help ourselves. You know, you fall into a system that it doesn't matter if you're the best teacher or the mm -hmm. worst teacher. If you're implementing new strategies or no strategies at all, 
you get paid the same. Mm. Your retirement gets fed the same, mm-hmm. you know. And the more you fly under the radar, the better off you are. Mm. Yeah. And so we're not really in a system that's really, you know, promoting mm-hmm. teachers to become better teachers. We're just not. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just hard to. It's just hard. I yeah. think I'll just sit with that. Can you know, I, can I just dip this down like this and get my yes? Yeah, one hundred percent. Very well done. Too, I, I see Tyler over there. He's he's not giving me the wave. So <laughs> nope, you're good. He's I'm got good. you. Still on camera. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wave. <laughs> you can be a human here. Yes, I can't. Thank 100%. you. Thank you. Did I get a dojo strike? <laughs> no, you're doing great. <laughs> Thank you. We might call home later, but only to give praise. My mom won't take the call. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just. Ryan, in your pause, I'm just like, it's hard. One of my biggest things that I keep going back to with our discussion so far is, okay, so how do we fix it? It's like where my (laughs) mind wants to take me. And I think, and I constantly am sitting here and like, okay, yeah, and in my classroom, I do that. And in my classroom, oh, I do this. And and Mm -hmm. you wanted to hand out your strategies. And I love it because, Ryan, you and I have had the conversations of, you know, you saying, I do have strategies of how I would have gone about this. Mm -hmm. And you're at the point now where you'll say, Olivia, um, are you interested in hearing any of those or about those? Um, Almost like saying, I can tell you how, you know, a way you could do this if you choose. Mm -hmm. Um, Where as the teacher that I am, I've noticed the strategies that I used and almost want to point kids away from it. Um. I was a good kid, didn't want to get in trouble because it terrified me, but that led me to not learn because I just didn't want to mess up. So I got great grades without any knowledge. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't want that for my kids. And I don't. You're going to grade this on the rubric? Right. I'm like, oh, forget the rubric. What do you want? You know? (laughs) Um, A rubric. I I just found out what that was last week. (laughs) I was very confused about that in grad yeah. school. I'm like a rubric. What is, what's a matrix? <laughs> no, we don't need that. Get get that out of here. But my my thinking is, you know, then I struggle with, okay, so yeah, uh, we want to see all kids as humans. And, and how do we work in a classroom within this behavior and these kids? And okay, now I have 32 kids in my last class of the day and they all want my attention. Yeah, right. And you're right. Half the time I feel that I'm becoming lazy because I'm like, well, gosh, all 32 of you want my attention in an hour. And now I don't know who to give it to or how to give it to everybody or where to look each day to make sure each person is feeling that I am noticing them. Plus, you've got me in this system where I wake up, I show up, I do the exact same thing every hour on the hour. Mm -hmm. I work by bells. I go home. I wake up. I do it again. And it's like, okay, well, I see that this system works to keep the peace, quote unquote. Right. But is every single part of it what's actually tearing itself down? Mm. Mm-hmm. And I'm finding the knowledge within myself that to fix the problem is actually not the answer, but to sit with the idea that there might not be a fix because everything will at some point become an issue and it feels a little bit calming and also very upsetting at the same time. You know, I think it's one of those things. Um, so in my thirties, I was super selfish, right? I Mm -hmm. I just kind of checked out of society and I was, I was very, very selfish and, um, very destructive to myself. And you know, when I got it together, um, I was reminded of uh, some old story, you know, of a, of a teacher and a student walking along a beach. Maybe you've heard this, you know, there's, you know, there's thousands and thousands of starfish that have mm-hmm. been washed up, right? Mm-hmm. You know the story, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I'm reminded of that, you know, I can make all the difference for this one starfish as I'm putting it back yeah. in. And so as I found existentialism, you know, uh, in Camus, you know, one of the things, you know, you first, you know, like, well, I'm pretty nihilistic when I, when I, when I showed up to life at 40. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, one of the things I had to realize is, you know, if you're not going to commit suicide, which is the logical choice to nihilism, uh, then, you know, you're going to have to ascribe that meaning. 
and life is absurd, you know, and mm-hmm. maybe it is pointless, and maybe it is meaningless, and maybe the universe is cold and indifferent, but what am I going to do for me? Mm-hmm. And so the best I could come up with was help the person next to me. Yeah. And, you know, I couldn't, when I was in a classroom, I couldn't fix the whole school, mm-hmm. but I could fix, you know, this student. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I couldn't, I couldn't fix that student's life. But I could make sure that that student was very polite when mm-hmm. that student was in school. Mm-hmm. I could make sure that that student learned how to sit still mm-hmm. for 40 minutes and studied. Mm-hmm. You know, And these were very difficult tasks. And these kids were only in the moment. These kids yeah. were in fight or flight all yeah. the time. And they were just fighting for survival. And with those kind of students, they're going to grab what they can mm-hmm. while they can. Yeah. And so when they start burning down, they're just, they're reaching, yeah. but they're going to get everything they can. Mm-hmm. And to teach a kid just to be still and to be quiet, you know, that was, that was a good mm-hmm. thing. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, you know, I think that, you know, that's for me, that was enough. Yeah. Yeah. But I, then I thought, well, hey, I'm going to change everything and I'll become mm-hmm. a process coordinator and change the system <laughs> from within. <laughs> And then you just get ground down in the machine and uh, <laughs> you realize you're not going to change shit. You know? yeah. Nothing's changing. Yeah. Yeah. The finiteness of, uh, of the strategy of, uh, no, really, I, I think, you know, and this and, uh, in my story and sharing that I came up against something that feels very similar to what you're talking about right. of just the, oh, this is like way bigger. Like, like mm-hmm. I knew it was big. But this is way bigger than I can get right. my arms around. Yeah. <clears throat> like, even if I had 40 of me, I still wouldn't. I wouldn't yeah. be halfway around There's it. no way. Right. There's no way. Because you're, you were talking about a systemic thing that, that our, our society, it's, it's ingrained into yeah, our society. In special education, there's federal stinking law. Oh, about man. It. It, it, everything is such a mess, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know the right way to educate children. Mm-hmm. I don't. Mm-hmm. Um I, I suspected if I had, you know, my, my, my daughters are adults now. I suspected if I was to have children now, I'd probably homeschool them. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just yeah. not really comfortable with the, the education system. Um, but, you know, hey, it's a, it's a great place to socialize. Mm. <laughs> yeah. They need that socialization. Don't homeschool your children. And make them weird, please. <laughs> <laughs> You know, in, in your role as a, as a process coordinator, you know, and jumping into that like supervisory role, you know, middle level management in, inside the, a large the, system. The curse of middle mm. management. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, what was the, what was your felt experience, you know, at like the progressing through your time? Like how many, how many years did you do that? Uh, two years. Two years as a yeah. process coordinator. And you know? can I jump in and Please? just ask at the end of that? Did you, are you still in education? Did you leave no, education? No, I've left education. We, okay. Was it at the end of that time that you like the, after those two years as a process coordinator, you're like, okay, I'm done with all of it. Um, we came to a mutual agreement. Okay. That we're done with it. Yes. yes. Okay. Just, I was like in my head right here. Yeah. I was like, hold on. Is he still doing that? Because no. if that's the case. Like, sounds like it's been being rough and we need to figure something out. Yeah. Yeah. The, the reality of it is, is the COVID year for mm-hmm. process coordinators was very rough. Oh, it was gosh. rough for all teachers. It yeah. was rough for students. I can't imagine. Maybe it was easy for students. I don't, I don't know. They're, it depends on the yeah, student's right. parents you know, and what they were yeah. asked to do, maybe. Um, yeah. But uh, it, same with some of the teachers, too, right? Yeah. I, I remember having a teacher. She says, well, all I have to do is check the mail today. I was like, oh, my gosh. You know, mm-hmm. I'm glad you're stepping up your game here. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it was really rough on all of us. Yeah. Uh, and then when uh, the process coordinators came back this year, uh, mm-hmm. there was there was a lot of uh, stuff that was thrown at yeah. them that would made it even even more difficult to yeah. be a process coordinator. And um, I, there's been a lot of losses, um, but I think you know we're in the middle of the great resignation. So mm-hmm. I mean, if McDonald's can't keep anybody, you know, why should Springfield Public Schools keep anybody? Uh, people are just just leaving. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. There's this, uh, you know, just felt sense and I, I can only see it through the context that I have experienced it. Uh, but this, you know, just this feeling of there's more than one way to skin the cat, you know? And it's just like, like that's been out, that statement's been out there 
my entire life and mm-hmm. I've heard it plenty of times. Uh, but there isn't the same felt sense of I have to give up X, Y, and Z in order to have A, B, and C. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There are contexts by which people can have both. Yeah. And yeah. can say, I want this and this and this, and I just, I want this part of my vocation now. And I want this time now. And I want, I, I just think there's opportunity out there and it's just, it's not the same coal mine that it used to be. No, it's not. It's you know? not. And that, I think that's one of the good things that came out of COVID is people found a, a different way to, mm-hmm. to live mm-hmm. yeah. a different way to make a living. Yeah. And, um, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, even if I hadn't became a process coordinator, I don't think that I would be able to would continue. My, I don't think so. You know, mm-hmm. there's something that's so challenging and you spoke to it just a minute ago, but just the, the commitment that I no, I am like exclusively tied up from seven 30 to three yeah. 30. I can't take a phone call. Yeah. I can't send a text message. I can't, I can't go pee. Right. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> there's something about that that is just, so challenging that you don't for people who haven't worked outside of education it, it, you just kind of chalk it up to sometimes like this is just how it is right but being on this side of it and like even just you and i trying to coordinate about things <laughs> yeah. for this oh thinking podcast i know it's like i work from eight to five and i can't talk to olivia until after five right mm-hmm. and that's when i'm with my kids and even today like <laughs> hey do you have time for like a two-minute conversation Seriously. i could hear the bells <laughs> in the background yeah it's like <laughs> Because that's all I really have. But I would like to talk on the phone because that would be way easier than trying to text anything yes. out. Right. And I think that's it because here I am, you know, still in education. And Ryan, to speak to your, you know, you're tied up from this time to this time. And I always answer that like, okay, people don't get it if they're not teaching with like, well, I'm sure some people get it you know? Uh-huh. And I'm like, well, you know, like nurses probably get it. And I like find that for some reason I usually like land on one group of people and I'm like, so I'm not the only one. So I'll just keep doing it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know? Yes. Right. And yeah. so That's it's a strategy for it's sure. The strategy. Yeah. Of like, well, I could complain about it, but there are other people. So I'll keep doing it. I'm not in it alone. Yeah. I think it's rewarding. It's worth it, right? It's worth it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. in the classroom, the class, yeah. you miss the classroom, right? The students. Yeah. You miss the students. Yeah. You don't miss all that math. You miss that math. <laughs> I, to be honest with you, Thomas, if I went back, I'd be a, a special education teacher. Really? Yeah. That's so weird. If I went back, I'd be a, a math, a math teacher. teacher. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> I do. I do have my art certification, but yeah. Hey, don't, why don't you come hang out with me some? I could do that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure Nixa would love me. Hey, I, you just, I've got a courtyard. You can come in. We'll just, you know. Just keep me out in a courtyard. <laughs> no, I'll let you in through. Well, you can't actually come in. You're like, oh, let's just sneak the tattoo guide in. You know what? Right. You know what? When I got my nose pierced, I was afraid they were going to tell me to take it out. Mm. But I got it when we were wearing masks. And so I just oh. kept my mask on around people yeah. as we were supposed to do. Like, I'm just following rules. Yeah. And the first time my principal saw it, he said, yeah, something hanging out of your nose. Sounds about right. And I said, you sound like my father with that response. And uh, I have a great principal. And he was like, yeah, what is that? People hook things onto that, you know, continue sure. the, the dad responses. And I was like, I mean, I guess so. <laughs> and <laughs> that was about it. And, you know, mm-hmm. and so I'm very thankful for him and for right. my admin, because I know like some places could say sure. like, that's not allowed. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think Thomas, if you ever want to come hang out, they'd say, oh, just one of Olivia's friends. Sure. sure. <laughs> well, you know, and I, I, I kept thinking that it had been funny if your principal had actually spotted a booger on your nose. I know. That yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, I'm not, I'm not talking about the piercing. I'm right. talking about that booger. That's <laughs> yeah. out of your nose. He'd probably say that too. Right. He'd be like, no, uh-huh. you literally, like, literally fix that. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to embarrass you, Olivia. <laughs> I would say that, you know, the, the relationships that, that occurred in the classroom and then, you know, the, in my interview for that, that assistant principal job at Jarrett, it was like a scared straight type experience. Right. And I don't know what your experience was interviewing for the job that you did. Um, but, uh, it was like, 
you know, we've got this bed program and this bed program and this behavior and you'll be doing this and you'll mm-hmm. be doing this and all this stuff. And I walked out of there like, I don't think I can hack it. I really? don't know that I can do this job. You were perfect. <laughs> well, I You're appreciate an amazing. That. You're amazing. I'll never understand why they uh, understand why they didn't like you once you became a full fledged principal. <laughs> I'll leave that in the mind. <laughs> <laughs> But you were, you were amazing and you're yeah. still highly respected over there too. People still talk about the legendary Ryan. Oh, no. <laughs> thanks. The Thomas. legendary. Yeah. I had a lot of fun. And well, after I left, I wish I'd spent more time there. Sure. sure. Right. Yeah. yeah. But you know, our egos get the best of us, you know, we want to climb mm-hmm. and yep. it's, it's weird how that happens. Yeah. The um, infinite ladder, man. I know. I know. And then if you yeah. don't climb the ladder, then you're just doomed to save money in the bank. And it's like, mm-hmm. Oh, what am I supposed to do? Just, you know, wake up every morning and, do this and put money mm-hmm. in the bank. Right. And you know, one day you wake up and you're whatever age and your life was not lived. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's just so short. That's why I'm going back to grad school. Just roll with it again. Yeah. 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 You're pursuing an art degree, right? Yeah. I'm going to get my MFA. Mm-hmm. Oh, sure. awesome. Yeah. It'll be my fourth graduate degree uh-huh. and I still won't be a, a, a doctor. <laughs> I still won't be a doctor, <laughs> but you know, the amount of knowledge that, gosh, that I can tell that you already have, having just met you today within our conversations. But after that, even, that's all from Google, though. Oh well, <laughs> you do a good job remembering it because yes. I'll Google something and then you can ask me a minute later and it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that, I hope that with your graduate program and and with, you know, when that finishes, that you find ways to continue to share your knowledge, your art. Right. Your experience. Oh, yes. Yeah. Your experience because it's one that just starting to sound like a twelve step meeting. <laughs> it's one that needs to be heard. Your experience, though. strength, and hope. My experience, strength, and hope. <laughs> I'm I'm laughing, but I'm gonna be honest, I didn't even know I was going in that direction. Yeah. So. You nailed it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Somebody else needs to hire me. I could have multiple jobs here. You could. You could. You could. <laughs> Absolutely. Um Yeah, well thank you so much for that. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I'm excited to see where you go with that degree. And I know that you had, in our last conversation, you had talked about the desire to go and, and teach at, at a university. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a university or a community college. I think uh-huh. a community, and I have a degree that would allow me to teach at a community college. Or sure, I could do sure. adjunct now uh, mm-hmm. at a university, you mm-hmm. know, art. Uh, but, you know, that was that was my, my dream when I was young was an MFA. And somehow yeah. I ended up doing this other thing. Um, yeah. You know, which was nice for a time, but, you know, um, once again, I mean, life is short and, um, you know, I want to have as many experiences as possible. Definitely. And just the, you know, I appreciate the, the feeling that I get after you say something like that is something that I felt around you often, uh, is this idea of like, just, I can be okay with being okay. Mm. I, I hope. I strive for that. I know you do. I do. But it comes off that way. It really, and it comes off genuine too. Mm -hmm. And that's an experience that I I have an experience in a lot of people, you know, only uh, in certain contexts. And it's something that I experienced from you. Yeah. When we were working together too. Right. Uh, It's just this idea that what yesterday was, was yesterday. Right. And uh, it was what it was. And here's where we're at. And this is today. Now we're in today. And like that can be awesome or that could be terrible, but mm-hmm. it just was. And mm-hmm. today can be awesome or today can be terrible. Yeah. And it's just going to be what it's going to be. And the, like, there's a stoicism that exists in the acceptance of that space. Right. That is very profound to people mm-hmm. who don't see it. Right. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, I didn't see it. And I think that's what's drawn me to you is this just... I desired to be grounded in that way and didn't know how to find it. Right. But you're finding it now. I'm finding it now. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you are. Yeah. And it shows. Thanks. Yeah. You're welcome. It feels really good. Well, you know, uh, to really paraphrase, you know, uh, take it completely. I'm not even sure how it was written. To be honest, you know, Adama Pata, but it's essentially something like, you know, Writers write, painters paint. I don't think that's what they said, you know, but I say it this way. Yes. Writers write, painters paint, the wise mold of their character. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you want to have a good character, 
you're going to have to work on having a good character. If you mm-hmm. want to have mm-hmm. this well-lived life, you have to live your life well. Yes. You know, the yeah. way I live my life is directly proportional to how I live my life. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that's what's most important to me. And it always has been. Uh, you know, I want to have good connections with people. I want to uh, take in information. I want to have experiences. But, you know, ultimately, I just want to be okay in my own skin while I'm mm-hmm. doing that. Yeah. And that's not always easy. You know, mm-hmm. no, it's not. It's not, no, it's not it's easy. Not. Yeah, you know, and I think that's the thing with with kids. You know, is that you know, uh, you know, I remember going to my mom once, and you know, I was trying to talk about something from my childhood. She's like, "Oh, is that what this is about? You were a child." Like I'm dismissed, right? Mm-hmm. And we do yeah, that like so it often. Yeah, it invalidates the experience. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah, and we do that so often, and we're talking about trauma informed care and all these things. But mm-hmm. the thing is that we're still missing is this is a human yes. being mm-hmm. trapped in a flesh mm-hmm. shell. Yes. Mm-hmm. Just jettisoned <laughs> yes. yeah. into this terrible environment mm-hmm. that's extremely dangerous. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. And they are feeling, you know? Yeah. We're not just thinking, we're feeling. Yes. Yeah. And they are going through life feeling. And we forget mm-hmm. that when we mark that kid's uh, name and put it on the board. Right. That that kid is feeling that experience, right? Uh, Regardless not, of what what is showing on the on the face, doesn't matter right. what the mask says. The body is absolutely feeling that. Yeah, they are feeling that, and every one of these individuals are feeling this stuff, and we forget it. And mm-hmm. the thing is, is you get caught up in that system, and we're caught up, and you know you're just trying to make it from A to B mm-hmm. every day. Right. It's like going to battle. It's like, oh, here we go. Let's let them in, mm-hmm. you know, and all right. the kids flood in. And we go to war and we try to just make it through Mm -hmm. with the the least amount of casualties as possible. Mm -hmm. And all the while, everybody's taking this up, you know, taking this in and they're feeling it. Mm -hmm. And we just lose that. And so even where, yeah. And even now that we're talking about all this conscious discipline and this trauma informed, it's still being missed. They're like, oh, well, we want to connect with the individual, but we're really not connecting with the individual. Right. Right. We're just not, mm-hmm. you know, and I think, you know, with COVID, we paused, um, force, we were forced to pause and then still not allowed to, you know, mm-hmm. by way of working from home and through that way. Um, but learning a new kind of way of living. And then we go back to school and this idea of, you know, going to war each day, it's like, Oh, I hear you and I, I'm like, yeah, it would be amazing because I want to do that. I want to do that. And then I think of my own experience and it's like, I am running so fast every single place I go. Mm-hmm. Like maybe not actually physically running, but I've got this list of, and that needs to happen and that needs to happen. And, and it's like, we're, we're returning, trying to fix all the problems that were created in a year plus every single other problem that right. is was there, there still was there. there is there is being created every day and it's this idea of it would be great to exist yeah mm-hmm. but i'm not even welcome to do that because i've got mm-hmm. things to do yeah. yeah and i have you you gave me goosebumps with your words and talking about gosh i just want to like write down the definition you gave of like a human you know like in flesh and then Mm -hmm. into this space this environment that's just so dangerous and not safe and Mm -hmm. i walked into another person's classroom the other day and this kid said okay let's start our reading and a kid goes well i'm not because i'm just a horrible kid yeah Mm -hmm. and he said it out loud for everybody to hear Mm -hmm. and i have this kid in one of my classes and so i walked over after everybody kind of got started and i sat down i was just like hey I want you to know that I really love being in a classroom where you are. Right. And he goes, well, I always mess up. And I said, Mm -hmm. well, sometimes we've got to have consequences for actions because we've got to learn that what we do, there is going to be a result. Mm -hmm. But I don't think you always mess up. I think you believe that about yourself. And I think you've been told that by way too many people that don't Mm -hmm. understand how much you have to offer. And this kid's face, it just, it went blank, but also, you know, filled with color right. because I don't think he knew what to do yeah, right. and how to be 
in this space where somebody said, you're a human Mm -hmm. and what you're doing is human. Mm -hmm. And that's cool to me. Yeah. And I don't think he was told that or is told that by his parents Mm -hmm. or by his friends or by, because half the class when he speaks up and says that is like, oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. You Second are. that. You're the mm-hmm. worst. You know, yeah. these things that it's mm-hmm. like, huh, we are all running and just labeling, 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 and, and throwing all of these emotions mm-hmm. within ourself and then out at other people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then let's just uh, ring the bell and send everybody home and not yeah. deal. I know. It's terrifying. I'm mm-hmm. really scared for us now. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> to sit and just talk when like I got that? past yeah. suicide, now I'm, oh. now I'm sitting back in it again. Thank you, thank you. Oh, Prim. Life is doomed. Life, Life is, is doomed. doomed. Um, There's safety and connection, Prim. There is safety and connection mm-hmm. until you're betrayed. Just kidding. Just kidding, guys. Yeah. Don't well, look I so mean, gloom. There is reality <laughs> of that, but there's mm-hmm. also reality of. You know, I guess what we've sat here and discussed, which is that connection mm-hmm. to that lasts because that connection is gone. And I think we've all experienced that yeah. and we've seen it within mm-hmm. the school system yeah. and we've seen it happen to our kids. Yeah. And the, the really the best thing that we can do is connect with others. I yes. really, I really mm-hmm. believe that. Uh-huh. Yeah. I really believe that, you know, um, um, I've really kind of made that my focus. Mm hmm in life, but really even more so like over this last summer, you know, somehow I've kind of just, you know, I've got busy as a 50 year old and kind of forgot to, that my adult daughters, you know, they don't really need me anymore. And Mm. I'm like, Oh, well they don't really need me anymore, Mm. but you know what? They still want to see me. So we we kind of started this family dinner thing on, you know, Sundays Uh once a month, Mm -hmm. you know, it's a must that all the grandchildren come and all the dogs come and, you know, you gotta have the dogs. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so you got all these dogs piled up and all these kids piled uh-huh. up. And, and that's something that, you know, I'm so busy trying to, you know, help wayward men, you know, that I, I forget, mm-hmm. you know, that, you know, my, my family still yeah. needs this connection yes. and that, that I still need them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing I'm always afraid of is to allow myself to, you know, need anything. Mm-hmm. And, um, You know, it's just so important. And I think that when you were talking about, you know, Olivia, when you were talking about these kids um, and these fears, I just kept thinking about us adults Mm -hmm. and how we tell ourselves that we're not good enough, that we keep replaying that tape, Mm -hmm. that we're not good enough, that somehow we're always that little kid. Uh, that's not picked for the tank, uh, the team that's mm-hmm. uh, sitting on a porch waiting on their friends to show up to never show up. That's uh, called a horrible nickname or, mm-hmm. you know, whatever that that just kind of stays with us. And it seems yeah. so cliche, like, oh, well, that can't be true. It's so textbook. But I guess, again, that's why it's in the textbooks, right? It's right. Because, <laughs> because it is it so really real. Is it really is real. Yeah. It really is real. And it really is common. Yeah. As adults, we just develop better strategies to insulate ourselves from those types yeah. of experiences. We just say, no, I'm not going to go to the YMCA and get picked for right. kickball. Right. Yeah. You know, we or have I'll that build it my own. Right. Are they playing <laughs> kickball at the YMCA? I don't know. Maybe. We should start a team. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dodgeball. Yes. Yeah. Well, Racquetball. you know, ultimately, you know, uh, yeah, you know, when I think about myself, you know, people are like, oh, you know, you're, you're scary or whatever. And it's like, well, to me, you know, isn't that kind of... Uh, of course, I'm going to end up looking scary because I'm I'm so damn afraid of everything. Mm. So of course, you're going to end up looking scary yeah. because you know you don't want people to get too close. Yeah, you don't want to have to have your feelings hurt. So mm-hmm. if you just kind of put off this, you know, artifice, you just don't have to worry about it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Strategy to insulate. Yeah. Strategy to insulate. Yeah. It's, you know. Yeah. We have those those strategies to do that, and then you think about how insanely beautiful but also terrifying it is that humans become so good at saying oh you see me like that and now i want to be seen like this so i'll change Mm -hmm. and i'll morph that's still not me you won't see the real me yeah because nobody has Mm -hmm. honored it before right and now i don't want to offer it to you and that's something that 
you know, for our kids is mm-hmm. so special to for a second say, you showed me who you are. Right. And I'm good with that. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a beautiful thing to be able to think about Mm -hmm. giving, you know, we're so focused on, well, and you need to get this grade and we need to get these test Mm -hmm. scores and, and why not just, Hey, thanks for showing me Mm -hmm. who you are today. Yeah. I bet it's amazing being an art teacher. I enjoy it. I enjoy (laughs) it a lot. I bet you get to see a lot about who people are. They find their freedom Mm. to express themselves. The coping that is available within my classroom um, to students and that I try to make available uh, can be, I'll tell you what, it can be stressful because sometimes it's the one class that kids get a move in. (laughs) Right. (laughs) But, um, but no, it is, it's awfully beautiful to be Mm -hmm. somebody who's welcomed into their mind in a space that other adults maybe haven't been welcomed into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Honoring students right where they're at. Mm-hmm. Honoring other adults. Yes. Honoring right humans at. in general where they're at. I can just sit with that. Yeah, me too. Thomas, this has been awesome. Well, I appreciate it, guys. Yes. Thank you so much. For coming. Did we, we rolled through our time. We're through it, man. That's amazing. Yeah. We, every, every time so far we'd have, we've had an interview where like, gosh, we could do a whole podcast just with you. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel that same way. Wait, this isn't a whole podcast. A whole season. A whole, a whole yeah, season. like a whole, a whole season. season. Oh, yes. a whole season. Sorry, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll be back for season 12. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll put it on the calendar. We'll see who finally, uh, what finally happened on Yellowstone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's this experience of like, I am so excited about this opportunity because I'm going to be able to know this person better. Mm-hmm. Right. And then I just walk away being like, I have so many more questions. Right. right. But... At any rate, like just getting to honor you and who you are and my experience of you so far has just been a blessing to me. And I appreciate it. And yeah. I'm so Thanks, thankful Thomas. to have been brought into this space and meet you. It's nice to meet you too. Yes. Olivia. I love it. I love yeah. learning from you and about you today. Well, thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Well, if uh, you listener, or you, if you're interested in supporting uh, free therapy for, for students, uh, patreon.com slash burnout educator. Yes. And if you just have a question or would like to reach out, contact at burnout educator.com. Yes. Until next time. Thanks guys. Thanks for listening. Thank you.